Okay, my friends, this is an area that I study quite well. This is Stowers Institute, and they are talking about what is a ribosome and how important they are because they are the building blocks of everything. They're, they're the enzymes, the chemistry sets. They, without them, you're done. Where do ribosomes come from? That's what I focus in on. Now, they're going to be talking about this, and I'm probably going to show some of their stuff, and it's just fair use act. I'm not trying to steal anything from them, but ribosomes are essentially tiny protein manufacturing factories. They make programs, basically. These proteins in these chains, they're, they're programs. They're literally programs. All right, so it's a protein manufacturing factory they found in every living cell from bacteria to plants to humans. Well, the ribosomes just didn't show up there by themselves. They are what's called free floaters. They're produced by bacteria that's in our body, good bacteria. And then they just go off on their own and they collect inside the cells on a thing that's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum it's and I'll show you all this stuff in a second we're gonna see it but they're talking about it being very important and yes absolutely and why are they studying them what are they hoping to find I think I might have some input here I'd like to show it so I'm gonna show it so ribosomes are the chemistry sets and these are the t how they, they look like little tiny balls and I, when I say tiny, I'm talking tiny. And the bacteria squirt them out all day long, and their DNA tells them what program they're going to make. Because all that is is a program. And when it un comes apart, it turns into a huge enzyme, which is unbelievably exotic in its chemistry capabilities. Now, here's the whole process. You have to have the bacteria. Without the bacteria, you're done. None of this happens. It doesn't happen. But if you have the bacteria, you create the ribosome. And the ribosome is all these different amino acids in a different sequence to create a program. And then it can interact with our DNA and cut itself in there and change the DNA and re fix the DNA. A lot of times, DNA gets damaged all the time. All the time. And if you don't have the right enzyme, if you're missing the enzyme, and you have to have those enzymes, if you don't have them and have them in sufficient quantity, you're, you're going to be chronically ill. Now listen to this. This is just out of, this is crazy. These are the tiny little ribosomes, little balls. And they just float around your body. They don't eat. They don't poop. They don't do anything. However, there's a trigger, and it snaps that thing in, it goes, pew, the sheath pops off, and out pops an enzyme or a protein. It depends on what kind of a, a bacteria it was. This pretty much breaks things down, and this builds things back up. Just think of it that way. Now, these little ribosomes are so small that inside of every animal cell, every cell in our body, which we have trillions, there's millions of those little ribosomes. They're just in here floating around. Now they do collect on this thing right here. This is called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And to me it looks like some kind of a labyrinth to get in to the nucleolus, which is where most of your DNA is stored and gives commands from there. But you can have millions in here. Just think about this. Now, they would have to have accumulated in here. And I'm sure that there's going to be certain ones that will be migrate towards your liver, towards your kidneys, or whatever where they normally would do that kind of chemistry. Maybe. Or maybe they just float everywhere and there's just a zillion of them 
collected in here, but on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, this is where they collect, primarily inside a cell. But there's millions. They're just floating all over the place. And if they get triggered, they pop into those exotic chemistry sets. I show you what this, this is like a little doodle, but this so exotic, it, it actually does look like this in a magnetic model. And all of these little chemicals have to be in an exact order to do what they do. And they literally electrocute other cells, like, phew, done. It's click chemistry. It's, it just clicks with its electricity and zoop, done. It's all over. Which would take literally millions of years for all of this different breakdowns. It's like giving a half life here, 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 and done. Where this would take a thousand years for this one, and 500 for that one, and 200 for this one, and six seconds for that one, and five. And you're going on and on and on. This it does, it goes, and it's done. The speed of light, lit literally. We have very nice, very simple little um, video. It's only two minutes long. And um, again, this is Stower, Stowers Institute. Now, they're looking at it from a different perspective than I am. They're saying ribosomes are essential tiny protein manufacturing factories found in every living cell from bacteria to plants to humans, yes. Now, they come down and they found that, that they're trying to figure out if these ribosomes are going rogue. It says they, the lab is trying to understand cells built in systems that regulate rogue ribosomes. And they just electrocute cells, I think primarily cells. I think the ribosomes, well, they could be bad too. So how do they, the system regulates rogue ribosomes and how these systems determine which ribosomes to degrade, maintain, or repair. It sounds like they got a pretty good, good amount of things that they can work with. Now, if this is all true, how, this is in quotes, how cells know which ribosomes are defective is the question we're trying to solve, said Ghosh. If we uncover how cells identify and eliminate a defective ribosomes, we can better understand ribosomopathies and develop new treatments. Well, it's, I believe it's all got to do with the, the bacteria that create the ribosome. If you don't have the right bacteria or your bacteria is damaged, you got to start with the bacteria. Now, she gives a nice little presentation. I'm going to just let it play and speak through it. Um, and again, I'm not trying to steal anything. It, it, I, they're looking into it, and so am I. Okay, this is their little video about the ribosomes, and they're going to explain their take on it. And uh, I think I've already shown you mine, or I will, but here we go. Have you ever wondered how your body builds proteins? Essential molecules that keep you alive? All right, proteins are the essential molecules to keep you alive. I think I've showed you that you, the ribosomes are required to create the proteins. So here we go. Well, that's thanks to tiny machines inside your cells called ribosomes. Let's find out more from the Kostova lab. So what are ribosomes and why are they important? Hi, I'm Tanushree, a postdoc in the Kostova lab in the Stowers Institute, and welcome to BioBasics. Ribosomes are like mini factories inside your cells. They read instructions copied from your DNA and build proteins step by step. These proteins are super important for many functions like fighting infections, digesting food, or building muscles. Because proteins are so essential, your body makes millions of ribosomes every day. It's one of the most energy demanding processes in your body. But what happens if this high energy process goes wrong? What if a ribosome is built incorrectly? Can it still function, or does it start? This is where they're talking about defective ribosomes. I would be more concerned about the bacteria that create the ribosomes. That's where the, I would look for the defects to start with. 
Here we go. Start causing chaos. In the Kustova lab, we study what happens when ribosomes break down. If ribosomes don't form correctly, cells can't make enough proteins, and that leads to serious diseases. They just said it right there. They can't make enough proteins, it leads to serious diseases. And that's, if you don't have the right bacteria in your body, you're not going to have the enzymes, which are the pro the, uh, ribosomes. It's, it's, it starts at the bacteria level. One example is ribosomopathies, a group of disorders where mutations in ribosomal proteins cause the body to cut its ribosome production in half. This leads to severe anemia, bone marrow failures, developmental defects, and a shortened lifespan. Luckily, the cells have quality control systems that can scan for defective ribosomes and eliminate them. But here's the big question. How do the cells know which ribosomes are broken? That's the puzzle we are trying to solve. We want to know how cells identify and eliminate defective ribosomes and what signals tell the cell to destroy one ribosome but keep another. We are also investigating what happens if this control system fails. By uncovering this new knowledge, we hope to better understand disease and find new treatments. Okay, that's all good. But they really have to see, is the bacteria creating a good copy of the ribosome? Is the bacteria damaged? Is it weak? Is it sick? Is there enough? That's where you got to start, is with the bacteria. I think they're starting too late in the process, to my mind. What they're worried about is when they unfurl from the ribosome, is this, is this chemistry correct? Or is there one twisted over here, twisted over there, or is the whole thing messed up? And how do they eliminate this? How do they destroy this? How do they keep this from causing more severe damage? And I think I've shown you, or will show you, the electrical, actually electric, they just, you know, electrify it and kill it. And then there must be some cleaners that come in and clean up all the mess. The body is a very, very cooperative system if it's running correctly. You're going to have waste. You, you're living, you're going to create waste. Somebody's got to clean that waste up. It's got to get out of there and get thrown away. Something's going to have to come and take it away. I don't see any other proper way that can happen. So you're going to have waste, then you're going to have things dying. And they're, as they get older and they're dying, they appear to be targeted for disposal. And then they kill them and somebody's got to take that stuff away. And in the meantime, everybody's got to be fed and nutrition and oxygen and all that stuff. Every single cell in your body has to be maintained with all of the the things the mitochondria make it keep working and I mean it's just it's a stunning stunning amount of cooperation absolutely stunning and um, you know every organ cooperates with every other organ secretions and you know all kind everything just it's just it staggers my mind every time I get deeper and deeper into this, and I think I, I thought I was as deep as you could get, but boy, I'll tell you, it just never, it never ends. All right, they're saying about the ribosome here. This just was updated a couple of months ago, and uh, it says a ribosome particle present in large numbers in all living cells. Everything that's alive has them and they serve as the site of protein synthesis. Well, they're actually little chemistry sets. Ribosomes occur both as free particles floating all around in your body, just everywhere, in prokarya and eukaryote cells, it's animals, plants, and every, all of them, and they also as particles attached to the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum in human cells, in eukaryotic cells, which are animal cells. And that's it right here. Now, 
small particles that came to be known as ribosomes first described in 1955. Now, I don't know how he see this, saw these because you can have in one single cell, one single cell, you can have millions of these little balls. Literally millions, they say. That's what they say. Now, I didn't make that up. And that's where the ribosomes come out and they go floating around until they attach to the endoplasmic reticulum or somewhere. But this is that endoplasmic reticulum. I guess they could just collect on here for rough. It's rough because there's so many on here. And the nucleolus is in here where you can, that's I guess most of your DNA really is working out of here to give instructions to the rest of the cell, I guess. And they say it gets damaged all the time and it gets repaired all the time. But you have to have the enzymes or you don't get the chemistry. It's as simple as that. I mean, I can't make it any more simple than that. If you don't have this bacteria shooting out that ribosome, you do not end up with the chemistry. Case is closed. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure that you have the right bacteria doing the right chemistry inside your body to create the right ribosomes, to create the right enzymes to do the chemistry, that's all. Now, I tell you, the animal cell, millions of these ribosomes can fit in here, millions. All right, and when they open up, they open up to be something huge like this. I mean, just think of this. Millions of these, I don't care how compact you make them, millions of them inside of one cell, I would think that's going to be, that's incredible. And then you still have all your other things, your mitochondria, your Golgi apparatus, the this, the that, the doom, and millions of these little ribosomes. Now, if they get triggered, boom, they snap and doom, they pop up in that chemistry, and whatever is supposed to be done is done instantaneously. And when I say instantaneously, in less than a fraction of a second, they do more chemistry than could be done in years without having the enzyme. And it does it instant done, case closed. And then it goes on to the next one and the next one and the next one. Now, for them to be worried about damaged ribosomes and how they're targeted for removal, I understand I looking at that, that's fine. And I think I did show you or will show you that they have seen them being targeted and killed. But I think the most important thing is to get the bacteria correct in the microbiome. Once that's right, I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of issues with all of these other things because then you have the enzymes, which means you have the chemistry, which means it does its job. And they have uh, people that have these bacterial replacements in their gut. And it's, it seems to work fine, and there's no real adverse effects that they can find to speak of. Maybe a little bloating for a day or two, but that's about it. This is the key, is to get to the one that, tr that sends off these ribosomes. And the one that sends out those ribosomes is this guy right here. And there's 75,000 or so different enzymes, which means there's got to be thousands and thousands and thousands of different strains of bacteria in our body, which they agree with that, too. Nobody's disputing any of these things I'm saying that I can know, unless you want to dispute it. And each one of them has a very, very, very specific job to do. And it could be cleaning up, it could be whatever, breaking food down, building proteins up, whatever it does. But this is where I would go first. And then we can look at damaged ribosomes, that's fine. But let's find out about damaged bacteria. That would be my first area of investigation.